So I'm in my office and I came in here to write and Alex went to the pool. I just did not feel like going to the pool today, so I didn't. And I am getting ready to go downstairs and meet him. But I did get my coffee from Starbucks. I'm going down to meet him at 317 Burger and I'm so excited. Oh, if you want a really good book to read for the summer, this is like one of my all-time favorite books of all time. It is called, Fer my hand is like shaking. It is called Ferris Beach by Jill McCorkle. And it is so, so good. One of my all-time favorite books. I hand this out to people all the time. So anyway, yep, I'm getting ready to go meet him and have a cheeseburger. And yeah, it'll be fun. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hi. Oh, I forgot to tell you I'm vlogging. So I'm vlogging because we are getting ready. Boo Radley, what are you doing? Are you giving your dad kisses? We're getting ready to watch Lights Out. And it looks awfully scary. I was gonna take a shower earlier, but I didn't. And I'm getting ready to make some tea. And we ate at Cold Stone Creamery and I had a delicious grilled cheese sandwich. And Alex, what did you have? American cheeseburger? We both had fries. What would you have, what would you rate your cheeseburger? Great. He's busy with work stuff. And this was the ice cream I got. Oh my God. You can go check it out on my Snapchat. It was called Mud Pie Mojo. It's so good. Mmm. gonna watch this movie and then okay I have to just tell you well first of all then I'm gonna do a live stream and then I'm gonna read because these are the five one two three five, eight, four, five, six books that I'm reading before June 1st the yearbook this is very scary pity pity Laura Chase pretty hair and pretty face isn't it a sorry fate she won't live to graduate <laughs> my husband thinks I'm foolish and then Great American, whatever. I am rereading Perks of Being a Wallflower. Tilt by Ellen Hopkins with the world's cutest. Do you see that bookmark? It's actually a little sprout. Summer Days and Summer Nights by Stephanie Perkins. And then a Christmas book. The Mistletoe Secret by Paul Richard Evans, or Richard Paul Evans. So those are what I have to finish. And then I'm thinking about doing sci-fi readathon for the first week of June. Because I want to do a readathon. An emojiathon is the whole month of June. But I tweeted the girl that does the sci-fi one, but she's not tweeting me back. Okay, since I figured out. how to use this tea thing. I am so excited. I love it. So I'm going to do a little bit more mixology today. Let's do... Let's smell the strawberry rhubarb parfait. All the ones that Tanya bought are caffeine free. I kind of like a little bit of caffeine. How do you open this package? So they come in these jars from David's Tea. And this is how much tea you get. I looked at it up last night, it's $5. It's pretty good, actually. Do they like seal it or something? Yeah, you have to cut it open. Oh my god. I'm gonna let my husband fall. Smell it. You don't like it? I mean, it's strong. I just didn't think that's what it smells like. What do you think it smells like? Uh, berries. Berries. Everything's berries. Peepee -pee even smelled it. There it is. And then I'm going to not put as much as I put in yesterday. I put too much in yesterday. Because you know I'm the mixologist. And 
And then I'm gonna use, is this caffeine free? This one is called Pick Me Up. It's a mate. Stimulant. I want to wake up a little bit. And this one just kind of smells like tea. Cinnamon tea. Not cinnamon, citrusy tea. So this is what it looks like, see? And I'm going to call this one movie night. Because I'm a tea mixologist. <laughs> movie night. Strawberry rhubarb parfait, pucker up, and pick me up. It is raining outside, can you hear it? It's like pouring down rain. I think I'm only going to get tea from David's Tea from now on. I really like it. Have you ever bought anything from Lush, Alex? No, man. I want to, though. I've never even been in Lush. But I do think it's kind of expensive. Let's keep on moving this camera around. So, if you don't watch my booktube channel, I'll have to show you this. So, I got these at Goodwill, and they're like these high school, like, I mean, look at her. She's like, I can't get out. I'm in the sorority house. Is that thunder? She's like, help, I can't get out. This one's called Nightmare Hall. High on a hillside overlooking Salem University, hidden in shadows and shrouded in silence. Sits Nightingale Hall. Nightingale, Nightmare Hall, the students call it, because that's where the terror began. And it's a whole series of books. And I'm obsessed with them. By Dan, Diane Ho. And then, and they're totally cheesy, but they're good. And then this one right now, I'm reading Peter Larangus, the yearbook. It's about, anyway, they're good. But like, I have been like, now I'm going to Goodwills all over Indiana and I'm buying all of these like Slumber Party by Christopher Pike. The face on the milk carton. I loved that back in the day. I'm buying all of these like cheesy ones like this. High school scary novels. So if you go to Goodwill or thrift stores and you find these, find them for me please. It's done. Mm, I can already smell it. It smells so good. Isn't that so cool? And then you just let it steep for a couple minutes, like four to eight minutes, I think is what it said. I looked on the website. And you can reuse them. I reused them yesterday, so. My hair looks pretty good for not even doing my hair today. I'm pretty fancy like that. I need a chopstick. I have 10,000 chopsticks. Ooh, let's try Reese's. I don't like that. Our TV came back on because I had it paused too long. All right, well, I'm gonna put my tea. So if you weren't here yesterday, it's kind of steeped really dark. Hold on just a second.
PB, you're just all over the place, aren't you? I was gonna get honey. I need to get that tomorrow, honey. And like almond milk. My tea. I need to write that down. Honey. What? Oh. Huh? I thought you were saying honey like asking for me, you weren't. Oh no. Uh, I'm gonna get honey and almond milk to use in my tea. So this is what you do when you get your cup. This one's from the Raw High Ranch. Anyway, then you put your equal or honey or whatever you want to do in there. And then you just take this, see, and you put it on top. Oh, it's not going to work. Because, the, of course not. Story of my life because the cup's too big. So then what you do is you put this over it, see? Can you hear it? And then it goes down. How cool is that? There's your tea. Total perfection. How easy is that? And then look. So yesterday I showed you the teas. I'll show it to you today. This one's got like a red tint to it. See? Almost kind of looks like like a deep red wine. So yeah. And then you can reuse it. I'm gonna fill it up again. Yeah, it's really strong tea. Because I put See, it's still steeping. Very cool. All right, we're gonna watch our movie now. I'll see you guys later, bye. Hey, you guys, it's the end of the night. It's the end of the night. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> oh, I used to love summer nights, like as I would go to bed, and I was so excited about the next day, but I didn't wanna go to sleep because I loved the sound of like, laying in my bunk beds and looking at the ceiling, which is, I was always laid on the bottom bed, right? So I had all my stuffed animals around me when I was a little kid, and then I would like, I could hear my mom down the hall, and she would be like up watching like a late, late movie, and um, I could smell the cigarette smoke, which I never like, it's so funny when I think about people smoking in their houses now, because like people just don't, right? Like very few people smoke in their houses, but like when I was growing up, like, like, all of my family and friend, like, parents, friends, like, just smoked in the house. Like, nobody thought about it. It wasn't, like, a weird thing, you know? And although I never liked the smell of cigarette smoke in the car, like, with the air conditioning and the windows rolled up, like, in the house, there was something kind of comforting about that smell to me. And, um, I can see my mom there and, like... Those, her summer night gown that came just below her knees and her little robe that she'd wrap around and her hair back in a ponytail or a bun. She always wore hair in a bun. A lot. She wore hair in a bun. Like a low, messy bun. And, um, yeah, I miss her. I'm not sad about it tonight, but I miss those days, you know? And I think today was, like, hard for me because, <clears throat> like, hard in a good way. <clears throat> I don't know if that makes sense to you, but so I went to uh, my office today and I wrote for a little bit and then um, afterwards Alex was like, hey, meet me downstairs and we'll go on a little dinner date to 317 Burger, which is like literally the restaurant below me and it's like cheeseburgers. It's a really great place. And so we sat out there and I had a grilled cheese sandwich and Alex had a cheeseburger and fried. It was so good. And um, 
then after, he was like, what do you want to do after this? Do you want to go see a movie? And I did, but like the movie, it was weird. Like the movie times tonight ended early. And so I was like, well, let's just go home maybe and watch RuPaul's Drag Race. I said, would you want to get some ice cream? And he was like, yeah. So we went to Cold Stone Creamery and he got, like he made his own. And I, I don't, and I don't even know what he got. A cookie dough, because he always gets cookie dough and then probably some other stuff in it. But anyway, I got, um, Mud Pie Mojo, which is like my favorite from there. We got like containers and brought it home. And then we watched RuPaul's Drag Race. And then we watched Lights Out. And I think I showed you guys that part in the vlog. But just laying around, the dogs were all around. We're eating ice cream. We're like laughing and jumping at the movie. And he was laughing because I was like, the movie was so scary. And I was like jumping at it. If you guys have not seen it, Lights Out is a really good horror movie. I love horror movies. And I love horror movies that are like fully realized like that. Like the story is good the whole way through. Um, so yeah, it was good. I kind of guessed the ending before, but whatever. It doesn't really matter anyway, you know? And, um, that was it. And then I did a live stream because he went to bed. And, uh, let's see. Then I listened to my audiobook for a little bit. And now I'm talking to you guys. I'm getting ready to go home and go to bed so that I can be in bed by like 2.30 because I want to be up by 10 tomorrow and get a bunch of stuff done. And we have our counseling tomorrow night. And we usually do like a dinner date after counseling. So we'll probably do that tomorrow night. Which Tuesdays are usually my <clears throat> meeting night with Tanya. But every other week um, we've been having counseling because that's like a good night for Alex to do it with his work schedule. So... Yeah. So it was fun. We like got to hang out the whole day together, which we haven't got to do for a long time. So because of our work schedules and things like that. Well, not really my work schedule, but his work schedule. And then, yeah, I love summer. Like, and you know what's interesting is that like, I don't know if you guys are like this, but like middle of July, the first of August, you realize that summer is always over and you're like, my nose is driving me crazy tonight. I'm sorry, you guys. It's like from my beard or something. But did you ever realize that like, oh my God, summer's almost over and I haven't swam at all. And, um, you know, like I haven't read outside and I haven't done this and I haven't done that. And you like want to get it all together like real quick. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And like experience summer. I am starting summer like tomorrow. Like I've already kind of like enjoyed summer, but like I did a whole video on my so-called Healthy Life channel, which is like, you know, where I'm talking about like improving your life and I read daily meditations and talk about it. And yesterday or today, I talked about bucket lists, like how to achieve your bucket list. Um, but I want to do like a bucket list summer thing, like the things I want to do this summer, like go to the drive-in and go putt-putt golfing and the art museum shows movies every year. They're doing Goonies this year one night. They do it on Friday nights. And Alex used to work till eight on Friday nights and he doesn't anymore. So we can now go to that. And I want to do that and take little weekend road trips. And I want to like go in the river and wade in the river and stuff like that. And I haven't done that in a long time. So there's all these like summer things that I want to do. Especially read outside. Like, I'm so excited about that. And I actually today was like looking up this readathon. I was looking for readathons that start like this week. And there was a sci fi readathon. And I don't read a lot of sci fi, but I guess like horror and zombie stuff classifies underneath that. And so I read a lot of like horror and a zombie books. So I'm going to do this readathon. I'm real excited about it. Um, so, anyway, yeah. Did you guys ever read the children's book, Summer? It's like one of my favorite children's books ever. It's like, I like the things that Summer brings. And then there's a the boy and a girl and their dog who they call Pup in the book. Our Pup likes drink cold water or something that says, it says all these things. And then at the very end of it, my favorite scene, I actually read the whole book, I think, for my booktube channel, but the last scene of the book is, um, They've just caught all of these fireflies and um, this like guy, this like, uh, he's like a farmer and he's carrying like these, this big barrels of hay and they're like, we stop a farmer on our way home to ask if we can sleep on top 
and um, then like they fall asleep and it shows them like asleep looking or no, the boy and the girl are looking at the stars and the dog is asleep and um, it says something about the horse goes trot 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 when we think about the things that summer brings or the happy things that summer brings and that's how it like fades off into that and I love that so much and I love just being outside at night in the summer and um, like getting fountain coats with Tanya or slushies. I love to get slushies in the summer and just sitting outside on our back patio or we sometimes just like sit outside at the gas station like on the curb and just talk and um, get ice cream like today like Alex and I got ice cream and I just love life so much you know it's real easy to get down and negative about all the bad stuff that happens to us and so much bad stuff does happen to us you know life is like can be really miserable sometimes but it's like finding the joy and the happiness in those small things you know it's like I was thinking about this today like when we got ice cream my mom used to always go and she would get like um, Rocky Road ice cream or like vanilla ice cream just very basic ice cream right and then she would put like that Hershey's in a can do you remember that where you like took the thing and it would like you open the edge of the can with it and then she would put like chocolate hot chocolate syrup over it Spanish peanuts and um, make these great sundaes back in the day we would also make like milkshakes in the summer and I would like put coffee in it and all kinds of stuff and like the instant coffee and blend them up oh my god they were so good those shakes and um, smoothies and I don't know why I just remember this my friends and I used to play this game in the kitchen my mom was cooking us lunch at, in the summer and it was like we would close our um, eyes and you had to guess what the spice is and then somebody would put a spice in their mouth and we'd all go like paprika Ew! and we'd all try it and stuff like that and then we'd go like we eat our lunch and uh, my mom would make us hose down our feet because we've been playing out in the mud like in the woods for like all morning long that we have to like hose down our feet and cut and dry them off and come inside <laughs> or she'd bring the food out to us and it'd be like hot dogs chips a pick always a pickle slice you or no a sweet jerk and pickle and then like one of those barrel drinks that i used to i talked about on here before but we'd always go to somebody mo different mom like there was always like a different house that we would go to you know in the summer to eat lunch when you think about it like really like those years that seem endless to me so I moved into that house when I was going into kindergarten so five kindergarten first grade second grade third third grade fourth grade fifth grade and then by sixth grade I had a whole new group of friends and didn't hang out with people in the street so really those years that seemed to me like endless summers we're really only six years, you know? It's strange, isn't it, when you think about it that way? It almost kind of makes me sad a little bit, like... Life goes by like that, and um, I don't want to miss anything else, you know? I was talking to a friend of mine tonight who didn't want to go swimming. Um, around some of, you know, his friends because he felt heavier. And I was like, and this friend is quite a bit younger than me. And I don't know that you get to an age where that stuff doesn't matter to you anymore. I think you get to an age where you either allow it to bother you the rest of your life he didn't want to swim around his friends because he was embarrassed that he had gained weight and he's insecure about his body and he always has been, he said. And, and I relate to that. I've always been insecure about my body, you know? And, and I said, and it just kind of flew out of my mouth. I said, yeah, I'm not willing to miss any more nights swimming because of how heavy I am, you know? I'm not. I'm just not willing to do that. It's like, I'm not willing to miss out on life because of my body perception or how I look at my body. You know, I'm just not, it's just, and really to be honest with you, the only person that really has an issue with my body is me. 
nobody else cares. You know, I could be the fattest person in the world and get in that pool. And maybe somebody would say something, but not to me. I would never know they had said it. I could just be slashing and wailing and having the time of my life. And I would never know that somebody felt in any way towards me negatively. You know, maybe a look. And I've gotten a lot of those looks. You know, I've gotten a lot of nasty comments about my weight through the years. But I refuse to allow it to stop me from enjoying life. I just, I'm not going to do it anymore, you know? I didn't participate a lot in high school. In school dances and sports and things like that. Because I felt like they didn't want me there. Um, I didn't fit in. And so what I did was, I became really different. You know, punk rock and the hair different, and wore different clothes, and I became a rebel, a rebellious teenager, and I resisted those things. And I said, I don't care about all that. That shit doesn't mean anything to me. And, you know, hand to God, I swear, right now, I don't feel like I missed anything by not going to a dance, okay? I really don't. I didn't get a, dan a prom. I didn't go to homecoming. I don't feel like I missed anything. I really don't. Like, if you said to me, what are the top 500 regrets you have in life? And listen, I have some. Well, maybe not regrets. It's not called that. What are the top 500 things in life that you didn't do that you wish you had? My school dances would not be on that top 500 list, okay? I just don't care. And I don't really ever feel like I was affected by it because I was having so much fun with my friends. But I do wish that I had been involved in school more. And I wish I had stood up for myself a little bit more. You know, I've, I've figured out this bullying thing a little bit. And when confronted in a positive way with the support of other people, it ends like that. And you know, like I have been, I've worked with teenagers and been bullied. Um, and I'm not talking about as a teenager, I'm talking about as an adult. And uh, and I do a lot of work on bullying. Um, if you guys haven't heard me talk about that before, my book is an anti-bullying book that I wrote. And um, I go and I speak at a lot of schools and talk about bullying and how we bring the bully and the bully the pers the bully and the bullied together. But I remember this one time. And I've told this story on here before. I had this kid that I worked with. In treatment, and he was an absolute bully. I mean, he couldn't wait to get the F word, you know, out of his mouth around me. And uh, every time he did, you know, I'd walk by and he'd say it underneath his breath. And every time he did, I resorted back to that five year old kid sitting at the kitchen table or at the lunchroom table with all the kids laughing at me. And I remember this one time, like, he needed me to help him get back to, like, uh, family visitation. And um, he had just called me this name. And I'll never forget, it was me and him. And then this, I was a counselor, but I wasn't his counselor. And this tech was sitting at the counter. And I walked by, and he said, okay, I'm ready now. And I go, excuse me? And he goes, I'm ready now. And I said, no. I said, you're not going to talk to me that way. And uh, think that I'm gonna, you know, bend over and do your, do what you want me to do for you to get you back to family. No, that's not how it's gonna work around here. What are you talking about? And I said, no. I said, you have no respect for me, and that's fine. I said, you know, I'm not a believer that respect is earned. I said, you're either gonna respect me or you're not gonna respect me. But that doesn't mean I have to wait on you hand and foot, and I refuse to. So you can just wait here until the next counselor comes back here to take you down there. And I said, now nah, at this point, looks like it's going to be about another hour and a half, which means you're going to miss family visitation. And he stood up and he started walking off the unit. I said, you walk off this unit, I'm going to call security, and your parents will be asked to leave. And he came back and he sat down in that chair. And five minutes later, he goes, I'm sorry. And I said, you're sorry for what? And he goes, I'm sorry for calling you those names. I go, you really think it's that easy, don't you? And he just kind of looked at me. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, you have been here for three months. I have never once said anything disrespectful to you. I said, what have I possibly done that have garnered that has garnered you saying to me these disrespectful words? I haven't said anything to you. I have never treated you disrespectfully. I have never been rude to you. I have only been nice to you. I've always said hi to you. I've always helped you with whatever you want. Why do you think it's okay to call somebody a name like that? Does it make you feel better about yourself? Do you feel so little about yourself that you have to say those things to, about me, a grown man, to make yourself feel better? Do you think people look up to you when you do those things? 
and he had this look of utter shock on his face. He didn't say anything. He didn't apologize again. I said, okay, I'll take you back to family visitation now, and I took him back down there. Two days later, he came to me and he apologized, very genuinely. Never had a problem with him again, and in fact, when other kids would say things about me, he would put them in their place that fast and say, you're not going to talk about Peter that way. And, you know, as much as I want to say that I don't think the respect is earned, I earned it from him. And I earned it from him by showing him that the way to get respect from somebody is to give it first, okay? You give respect to get respect. You treat people the way that you want to be treated. We don't live in an entitled world where things are just given to us, okay? And, you know, I think that that's a really good lesson just in life, you know, in general, is just that how do you want to be treated? How did you want, how do you want to be perceived? Who do you want to be in life, you know? How did I even get here talking about this? It's all of it a lot, though. You know, it, all of it is so much, and... Those were tough days for me, you know, when I worked in treatment centers. And kids can be t kids can be mean, but kids can be very loving too. And I had some wonderful, wonderful kids that came through there, you know. I have kids still that reach out to me today, and they're 30, and they're like, I just want to let you know that I'm alive, and I have kids today. And if it hadn't been for you saying A, B, and C, and I'm like, I don't even remember saying that, you know. And um, it's hilarious to me, you know, that like. I mean, it's not hilarious to me. It's powerful that me saying one or two things with them changed it. And, you know, that's how this all got started with me talking about the weight thing. I talked about this on a vlog not too long ago about my friend that said to me, I never see you anymore. This was years ago. Um, and he goes, you know, I know you don't come around a lot because you've gained weight. And he said, I don't care about you having gained weight. I just want to see my friend. And it was super powerful to me, you know? And um, it didn't get me back into going to see him a lot because I was really insecure about my weight. And I was telling this friend of mine tonight, you know, when I got married, I was 60 pounds thinner than I am now. And all of our friends went to the pool that day. And I wouldn't go and lay out with my shirt off in 110 degree weather in August in Vegas because I was so insecure about my body. And I look back on those pictures now and I think to myself, I wish I had that body today, you know? But I've had this body dysmorphia all my life where I've just like had this distorted view of who I am. And really the person that's blocking me from doing things because of my body is me, you know? change it or accept the body that you were given, you know, and, and that's really the trick. And, um, I'm not ready to accept it yet, you know, so I need to do some things to change it and whatever. How did I get from having such a wonderful summer night to all of this? This is very deep, don't you think? Anyway, I do love summer though. And I don't want to miss out on anything summery because I don't want to, you know, wear a bathing suit and go to things, you know? Like, I'm not willing to miss out on things anymore. And neither should you. Whatever it is in your life that's keeping you from missing out, figure out how you can slowly start participating in life again, you know? Because we don't end up not participating in life real quick. I mean, it slowly happens. It's, we say no to one thing and then something else, and then our head starts triggering, and then sooner or later what we know is that we're not going out and doing things and seeing people. We're just at home, you know? And it's a scary place to be, and so it slowly has to, we have to like unwind that as well, you know? It's like jewelry in a box that gets all wound together. You know, you have to take, it doesn't get that way overnight, you know? You gotta take the necklace and weave it through and slowly look at it and figure out how you're gonna get it apart, and then you know, sooner or later, you got eight individual necklaces. When you deal with each of those individual necklaces, each issue of ours alone. But right now, it's just this ball of mess. It's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know? For me, sometimes, it's just simplifying it and going, it's about as simple as sitting on the front porch and drinking a glass of lemonade. I can't get it any deeper than that right now, you know? I just can't. Like, for tonight, it just has to be about... It has to just be about like sitting by a pool or sitting on the front porch 
and just enjoying the moment. So I hope you guys can do that and um, I'm going to work on it too. <laughs> and we can all lean on each other, right? I love you guys so much. You give me purpose in doing these vlogs and it makes me so happy. And um, I love sharing my life with you and I love that you guys share your life with me in return. It makes me... It, it, it really makes me more happy than you'll ever know. I love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.